Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we're talking about quad-core CPUs and where they stand for gamers in late 2017. Now this isn't a benchmark video, I've kind of already done all the testing that needs to be done on this subject for now. Rather, I'm going to discuss a few thoughts and opinions. So earlier this year, the world's tech media, which included myself, raved about the Pentium G4560. And well, why not? It was basically a KB Lake Core i3 for an incredibly low $64 US. The generation prior, you were looking at spending twice that amount of money to get the same level of performance. The G4560 also obliterated anything AMD had on offer in the sub $100 US price range. With two cores clocked at 3.5 GHz plus the aid of hyperthreading, we found it to be very capable and the perfect budget pairing for something like the GeForce GTX 1060 or Radeon RX 480. The G4560 was such a great buy that even passionate AMD fans were willing to stick their hand up and say, yeah, that's pretty good. Despite that though, there were those that argued no matter the price, the G4560 was junk and a dual core CPU in 2017 was a bad joke. I'd probably agree if the G4560 lacked hyperthreading support and wasn't able to deliver playable performance in all the latest games. Now don't even bother trying to tell me it can't handle 64 player Battlefield 1 action. Sure, it might stutter every now and then, but I found it delivers an enjoyable and certainly very satisfactory experience for what you're paying. Performance might look a bit ordinary when paired with, say, a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, and sure, that does suggest a limited lifespan, but it does also cost less than $100 and works well with $200 GPUs. Therefore, it's my opinion that right now, in late 2017, the Pentium G4560 is still a viable option and really is a great solution for entry-level budget gaming. You know, for guys that can live with the odd frame hitch now and then in extremely demanding titles. So that being the case, what do I make of quad-core CPUs for gaming in 2017? Well, I feel like I've said, or what I've said so far kind of covers that one, but let's go down that rabbit hole anyway. Recently, when we reviewed the Ryzen 3 1200 and found that it was an exceptionally good value CPU for budget gamers with its four overclockable cores, the vast majority of you seem to accept that. Of course, once again, there were those claiming that quad-core CPUs are dead and have no right being used as gaming CPUs in 2017. I also hear stuff like this probably quite a bit more, actually, when talking about CPUs such as the Core i5 7600K, as if the R3 1200 and 7600K are anyway comparable in terms of gaming performance. This right here is the heart of the issue for me. It just seems like some people tend to generalize a bit too much. Just because one quad-core CPU might offer a bad experience in modern titles, it certainly doesn't mean they all will, unless of course we're talking about the absolute fastest quad-core CPU, but based on my own experiences, I find that a bit hard to believe. Now this most recently came up in an unboxing boxes episode of all videos when discussing the new ASRock Mini ITX AM4 motherboard. I said something along the lines of, how this would be a perfect home theater PC type gaming rig with the Ryzen 3 1200 and a mid-range GPU and a shoebox size PC case. Bal Mahal was quick to shoot that idea down though and seemed rather annoyed that I even entertained the idea of recommending the quad-core Ryzen 3 CPU to gamers. He also claimed that today's games require a minimum of 6 to 8 threads. We went back and forth on the issue and he also claimed that the Core i5-7600K doesn't provide smooth gaming performance claiming that it will experience dramatic frame drops whenever the OS decides to do stuff in the background or draw call heavy workloads appear in a PC game. I don't mean to single this particular viewer out, even though I realise that I just sort of have, but anyway, some of the points made were valid, at least they would be with a bit more context. Uh, I picked this comment though because it is a very recent comment and it's really in line with other comments that I've seen on the channel that talk about quad cores being no good for gaming. Uh, in my opinion, there really is a massive difference in performance between something like the AMD Athlon X4 950, which we've sort of recently see make its way to the retail channels, along with, say, the Ryzen 3 1200. A huge difference between those two particular quad cores. And then the Ryzen 3 1200 and something like the Core i5 7600K. Those, there's a massive difference between those two CPUs when it comes to gaming performance. And again, they are all four core, four threaded CPUs. So, do gamers require six to eight threads in 2017? Well, 
No, I don't believe they do, and I've shown this through extensive testing on the channel already. I'm also not basing this opinion on a few thousand benchmark runs conducted on a clean system. I've actually spent many, many hours gaming on the Ryzen 3 1200 rig now, and in instances where I found it to actually be quite weak, had nothing to do with the core count. Coming from my Core i7-7700K gaming rig, the Ryzen 3 CPU really struggled with StarCraft 2 once the action got hectic in a 4v4 game. To be fair though, even the 7700K slows a little, but that's because the game really only heavily taxes a single core, and that core needs to be clocked extremely high and offer excellent IPC performance. My 7700K gaming system also runs with a GeForce GTX 1080Ti at 1440p. For playing with the R3 1200, I've been using a 1080p display with the GTX 1060. For the level of investment, it's my opinion the experience on the Ryzen 3 1200 system with the GTX 1060 is exceptional, and for the most part, I have to admit it really isn't that noticeable from my high-end gaming rig. The 7700K is of course still a quad-core, but it has hyper-threading support for 8 threads, and my system has also been overclocked to 4.9 GHz. If you lump the Ryzen 3 1200 in with the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, then sure, compared to the 7700K, it doesn't look great. That said, at no point is the experience bad. It just looks weak pushing 106 FPS in Battlefield 1, opposed to 168 FPS with the 7700K. So let's circle back to the Core i5-7600K. Is it a bad gaming CPU in late 2017? No. Certainly not, at least in my opinion. As much as I like the Ryzen CPUs, the 7600K is arguably the better CPU right now for the vast majority of games out there. You can certainly find titles where the Ryzen 5 1600 is faster and it could possibly end up being the superior CPU down the track, but for now, most DirectX 11 titles play better on the quad core. Okay, so the 7600K is still an impressive CPU in late 2017, but would I buy it? Now let's for a moment pretend that the 8th generation series isn't coming in a few weeks time and with that we will get 6 core Core i5 CPUs. So again let's pretend that the 7600K is it from Intel in 2017, there will be no better CPU for $240 US, so would I buy it? Well, again, no, I wouldn't buy it because I'd get the Ryzen 5 1600, which is not only cheaper, but also supports overclocking on more affordable motherboards, and it ships with a decent cooler. As important as all those things are, when it comes down to value, the R5 1600 is every bit as fast as the Core i5 7600K when using the GeForce GTX 1070 or perhaps even Vega 56. How many of you will actually spend more than $400 US on your graphics card anyway? Actually, it doesn't really matter because if you are spending $500 plus on a graphics card, you're likely looking at a more substantial CPU purchase anyway. In a few weeks time we will have the 8th generation Intel Core series and with that for the first time ever we will have a 4 core, 4 thread Core i3 CPU. And because of that this debate will no doubt fire up all over again and there'll be those that claim that the Core i3 8100 for example will be a bad buy because it only has 4 threads. Yet we'll find that if you pair the CPU with an affordable graphics card then it's going to deliver a similar experience to a CPU that costs significantly more. Then we have the upgraders debate. It's no secret that Intel's product lines have stagnated over the past five years or so, and with no competition from AMD until very recently, things have been slow to get moving. If quad cores are indeed dead in 2017, then those rocking a Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, or maybe even a Broadwell processor are probably in desperate need of an upgrade. Truth be told, if you have a locked Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge Core i5 processor, then upgrading to something like the Ryzen 5 1600 will offer noteworthy gains, even with a mid-range GPU. However, if you're lucky enough to have an unlocked Core i5 and you've overclocked it to 4.5 GHz or higher, then the upgrade to the R5 1600 is more of a sidestep than a tangible upgrade at this point. In fact, for the older but still very popular titles such as CSGO, the old unlocked quad cores are likely going to be superior as these games typically only utilise a single thread. For these kind of games, you want a high clock chip with strong IPC performance, much like what we saw in StarCraft 2. So when picking your next CPU, you want to consider a good many things. How long do you plan on going between upgrades? What kind of GPU will you be using? And can you see yourself uh, getting an extreme GPU in the future? You know, something that costs $400 plus. Uh, and really, just as importantly, what other games you'll be playing? 
My advice is not to get too hung up on the whole core count thing. A CPU with more cores isn't necessarily better than the one with less, and this is particularly true if they are of different architectures. The CPU's architecture and operating frequency really influences how many cores you'll require for acceptable performance in games, though the games also have to be able to utilize the amount of cores you're bringing to the table as well, so again it comes back to the games you plan on playing. CPU utilization isn't always the best indicator either. I know people always focus on this, but it really isn't. We saw with the Core i5 2500K at its stock clock speed, it was pegged at 100% in Battlefield 1, and yet it provided a much smoother and better experience than, say, the FX8370, which only saw utilization hovering around 70 to 80%. Finally, if you want to do something like streaming, then even a highly overclocked 7600K might struggle, and this is a valid argument for picking up something like the Ryzen 5 1600. In the end, it really comes down to what you can afford, obviously. The cheapest 4-core 8-thread CPU from AMD is priced at $160 US, and while that is very reasonable for what you get, it's still not much good to someone who can only afford $100. For a final hypothetical scenario, if the Core i5 7600K was priced alongside the Ryzen 5 1400, and that is to say it cost $160 US, then despite the fact that it only has half as many threads as the AMD CPU, I would be picking the Core i5 every day of the week. As I've said, all CPUs aren't created equally, and even in core-heavy games such as Ashes of the Singularity, a stock 7600K beats an overclocked Ryzen 5 1400. That doesn't, however, mean it's worth spending 50% more on the Core i5 processor, because if you're pairing it with a mid-range graphics card, there's really going to be little to no difference between the two. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon.